Welcome back to week eight of our spring split coverage. It's time for our third match, Team Solo Mid versus Gravity. Last week, TSM once and for all settled the question of who is the greatest region with their first place win at IM Katowice. NA, baby. Feels good. <laughs> yeah, they did it with two European players and a Korean. NA <laughs> is the best. <laughs> ah, man, we are amazing. Dyrus and Wild Turtle are the best players on planet Earth. Absolutely. No, but overall, like TSM, they knew they were coming into the back half of the regular season. First nine games, put every team once, went eight and one. They said, great guys, we conquered NA, let's move on. But they decided they needed to practice and rehearse for international competition. They did so rather well, a couple of rocky points, but they got the practice out. They figured what doesn't work, what does. Lissandra does work, Caspia doesn't. Okay, find out more new things. So far, TSM looked very good, but now it's 5.5. They're a bit late to the party. They just came back from Poland. How quickly are they going to adapt? And you know, can they keep this running? Can they make, them, make sure they get themselves that playoff by? Yeah, and I mean, this is one of their first international tournament wins in a very long time, since yep. 2012. So yep. we don't know what this is going to do for them. and Maybe it will probably bolster them, but this is the thing is you can't be complacent with that. And I expect them to continue their work towards international tournaments. They can't be caught just taking playoffs for granted. So I feel like this is going to be them using this time in the regular season to experiment even more. And I want to see that diversified playbook just continue to have more variance to it. Like, like you said, Lissandra works, Cassiopeia doesn't. But is there a world where that Cassiopeia does work for Bjergsen if he practices it enough and if the team can figure out on 5.5 how to just pick the champions that will work around it? Now, on the other side of this matchup, Gravity has also been expanding their play style and champion pool so far with mixed results, but the 5.5 patch may benefit St. Vicious here. Oh yeah, Saint is very adaptable with new patches, and the swing towards the tanky style junglers is really kind of his forte there, because he loves those champions, and every time that a, a patch comes out, he's always the guy who's like, here's the tier list of what's really good, and he identifies it very quickly. Yeah, but I want to see how that fits in the grand scheme of gravity comps overall, because they are actually winning a whole bunch of this split with like Zed Vi, yeah. Cassid and Vi, these backline diving heavy assassination teams where you go ham, you don't take any prisoners, and that worked really well for them. Now, is that going to happen now in the last four games in a new patch? Gravity right now, they're in the prime position to make a move and figure out what their postseason is. They were in that fifth place tie. They actually still are right now. Team Liquid, uh, half a game behind. Team 8, the same record as them right now. Seventh is a disappointment. You don't get to do anything at all in the postseason. Fifth or sixth is awesome. You get to play in the playoffs, and that's really where they've got to figure out what they're doing in the last four games. TSM digs C9 and Team 8. Like, they're playing some of their contemporaries here. Yeah, absolutely. Be being that they're playing some of the top teams here, absolutely crucial for them to pick up these wins. Be also a huge boon to their confidence. Now we are going to throw it over to our guys on the caster desk to get the game underway. But as we go, Dyrus shared some of his thoughts on St. Vicious and how his performance has changed throughout the split. The very big differences I see from Curse St. Vicious to Gravity St. Vicious was at the start, St. was actually really, really good. And back then, Curse with Saint, he had the confidence to carry the team, you know, lead the team. But after All Stars, I felt like he lost confidence or motivation. So when he came back, he had all that confidence and motivation at the start of Gravity. But as time went on, it feels like he's gotten weaker as a player. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. That is towards St. Vicious, who he's, he's been hitting his smites lately. Matured. He's been doing everything he has he's to. He's just matured over and time. And he's also, one of, calmer he's also one of the guys that tries out like every jungler on a new patch, so I'm, I'm excited to see he what he does. He also stopped drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Haircut, he's good to go. Let's check in, or let's check in. Let's get into the game, rather, with a quick roster rundown on the blue side. It's Team Solo mid. Dyrus in the top lane. Santorin in the jungle. Bjergs in the mid. Wild Turtle lady to carry. Lost Boy at support. And Coach Loco Doco. And on the red side, it's Team Gravity. Up top is Hauntzer. In the jungle was St. Vicious. Mid Keen, AD Carry Cop, and support Bunny Foo Foo. That's right, Bunny Foo Foo on support, trying to make plays for the team all the time. Him and Cop have actually been quite impressive this year, really putting up some good games. Cop's Graves has been quite something to be reckoned with throughout these games. 7 0 7 last week against Winter Fox, and even in their loss versus CLG 102. All right, so heading into this, uh, let's see if Team Solomid continue to ban more. Oh, there, there it is. Well, Morgana banned. <laughs> not let's only, see, Kobe. <laughs> let's see. You don't have to wait long. They are not shy about uh, their Morgana ban. They're not trying to no. hide it. Every single game here, especially against somebody like Bunny Fufu, 
All right, so that will deny some of the uh, protection against hard engage. Let's see what else we're going to chalk up. Sivir has been one of TSM's most successful champions. Yeah, uh, that absolutely. May, this may shove Wild Turtle more towards the Jinx area of his champion pool, with Nidalee being uh, banned as well against Santorin. And there's just the OP Sejuani. Taken down a notch. Gotta love it. And he gets banned as well. Have yeah, really I think that's a reaction to the. Her. I think that's a reaction to the Morgana ban. Yeah, uh, good call, good call, because we haven't seen it too much today. So and very Les nicely played. Yeah, and when Les Boy doesn't play Annie, he's pretty much just played Janna. So the Rexai is first pick for Santorin. He went for his first game in Italy last week, but with this open and Italy banned, mm -hmm. it seems according. Rexai just. Probably the most well-rounded jungler in the current meta. Uh, you do not have to switch over to tank junglers just because tank junglers have a new option. Yeah. Uh, Rek'Sai still vastly outperforms them in the early game, plus has way more mobility for the late game, provides you with way more cross-map plays that you can create. Um, and with that, also provides a lot of even early dragon control because you can back after a fight and then teleport back out onto the map yep. uh, to pick up an objective after a fight with full health. So the Thresh and Maokai are picked up. Bjergsen, pretty much everything open for him in hey. mid lane. Shout out to Keen there, the <laughs> Earth God. Bunny Fufu gets his Thresh as well. Yeah. We don't talk about this every time, but this guy came into the professional scene as a Thresh only main and absolutely destroyed many a team just with Thresh. So, gotta pay it respect. Deny the Morgana, but he's got the playmaking kit available to him now. Ah, here we go. I was expecting a, a Nunu from Dominate, but St. Vicious, uh, basically the mentor, the original Nunu lover here, definitely going to be very happy with the. New new on the current patch. Lust Boy, support Rengar. I like it. We'll see what he does. <laughs> yeah. Bola, yeah, I like Bola's it. I like throw it. the brush. Works great with this uh, Lulu to speed him up. <laughs> uh, throw the shield on. Cats love pixels. But, <laughs> but seriously, the the new new, I really. Yeah. I like the champion here for Saint, especially because he wants to go more towards supporty style jungling. Uh, but the only thing is, locking in a Corky with a new new always just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I love more auto like attack you're, based you're missing AD that carries. If synergy. You're, if you've got this great playmaking front line of Nunu, Thresh, and Maokai, just bring a little bit more late game firepower just in case you guys go late game. It, but th Cop with the Corky is going to be a huge mid game. A spike. great spot for a Jinx, even. You have the Thresh, right? You have your safety. Yeah. So maybe to each his own, Cop goes Corky. He is still very, very good on Corky. It's one of his high tier picks for himself in comfort. And the Mundo gets played again. Dyrus is going to be on that one. Man, I asked Dyrus specifically about <laughs> Mundo. I, I saw him in solo queue playing some Mundo, and I asked him specifically about it, if he was going to play. And he was like, ah, oh, Mundo's just kind of there. He's just another tank. He's all right. So he didn't say no. He did not say no. <laughs> That's true. what you're telling me. Uh, and with a low damage comp that he's looking at, it's he. It's going to be, you will be hard pressed to kill this Mundo in the late That's game. That's true. Corky doesn't tank bust. If, if you're not getting that. If Grabby does not kill. <coughs> no, it's in the middle. <laughs> Don't say anything. Yeah, well, of course it's in the middle. This is Keen. <laughs> but I'm just stunned they let him play it. Oh, dear. I. They finally unleashed the Urgod. Holy the machine. Moly. I'm so happy with this entire week of Sick League of Legends. I'm, I can stand up if I want to stand up. <laughs> this is going to be, oh my god. I actually I actually never even asked Keen about his mid lane Urgot just because I knew Are you Keen would never right let now? him play it. All right. Yeah, I'm going to open up Urgot in the low wiki real quick. <laughs> no, but seriously, about. this is... Something if people you know follow the wow. streamers in their off time, Keen plays mid Urgot all the time in solo queue. It's banned against him even people in solo queue if they get him in back to back games. I'm so excited for this. All right, I definitely want to dive right. deep as we get into the mid lane on okay, this one. Yeah. Coaches, 
Going to get their handshakes in. I'm sure everybody at home may be swaying their vote right now. It, it might be changing. This is the first time we're going to see Keen actually being breaking out the machine. Yeah. Breaking I'm, out his I'm actually really curious to what build he goes with, too, because Urgot got some interesting buffs, uh, you know, towards the, Anna, uh, the mana itemization. And we will see. So now that you've gotten a look at the team comms, start sharing your picks. Tweet hashtag TSM win or hashtag GV win to at LOL Esports. And we'll see if we get any hashtag LCS big plays with some hyper kinetic position reversers. As we get into the matchup, we are getting into game three of the day. And we'll see what they can do. It's going to be Team Solomon versus Gravity. All right. So the, the mana buffs I was talking about are the 8% of your mana has been added to your shield strength. While the base was taken down a little bit, uh, late game, if he does go, you know, Muramana um, and get that transform, it's going to help out with his sustainability. Also, his ultimate cooldown taken down at, at lower ranks, if I remember correctly. <laughs> the crowd booing Bjergsen for taking pot shots at Keen already. Keen just wants to have the dance off. It's really hard to outdance someone with four legs, though. Yeah. I feel like the edge already going to Keen just because the well, missed shurikens from Bjergsen. Kobe, Kobe, he has four legs as well. Oh, snap. Another miss. Keen is on top of his game. He doesn't even have to try and fire rockets at Bjergsen. All right. Well, uh, let's take a look at the early game here, though, because it looks like it will be standard lanes. Uh, Maokai probably will start a camp. Uh, looks like it will be Wraith camp. Mudo can do the same. Nunu starting top side. Interesting. Nunu, by the way, especially with uh, the new jungle item here, Cinder Hulk gives you bonus HP, 25%. Nunu already gets bonus HP from chomping down on any minion in a buff camp. So uh, the the location that you get your buffs from changed on Nunu. You get your 10% HP and your size from actually the little ones or the main monster from the buff camps. Um, and with that, with all of that HP that he gets so early now, it's super hard to push him out of the jungle. So Nunu is really free to get deep wards in the enemy jungle, uh, even early on in the game. Now, Rek'Sai is one of the hardest champions to keep track of because she has a global teleport at level 6, but Nunu, a great champion right. to do that with. We'll see how well Saint can control the early vision. Uh, should be rushing into an early sight stone. Uh, I don't know if, if it'll be after the jungle item completion or even before. You can e easily go either item path. Um, but really, everything we got we got to talk about is coming from the mid lane here. The Urgot versus Zed matchup. It's going to be good. Not one that I've really ever seen in professional <laughs> oh, play. So it's going to be a learning process all around for the viewers and if not, players for Solik. I think the main thing to remember is a lot of people forget about the passive. Everybody knows about, you know, the heat-seeking missiles, you know, and landing the uh, acid hunters, but really the passive from Urgot is the un unsung hero because his basic attacks will actually reduce all damage that your target deals by 15%. Now you have to keep hitting them because it only lasts like two, two and a half seconds or something, mm -hmm. but uh, if Bjergsen goes for an all-in after being hit by that, greatly reduces Zed's all yeah. potential on her gun. It doesn't match the calculation you're thinking about once you get hit. Yeah. So that kill potential, hopefully coming from the ignite after the fact. 81% to 19, the Ergot maybe not flowing too many votes their way. Bjergsen Ooh, taking the juke. shadow. Get another heat strike in, very nicely done. And he knows with Santorin, just on the backside, he would be all right if he were to get ganked. Yeah. Well, it looks like the fan vote, you know, is heavily in favor of TSM. That's one of the lower votes for TSM because they're always up by like 90%. So the Urgot taking them down a little bit. Get some extra fan support. And Keen already, massive CS lead here. Looking to bully Bjergsen. Once he gets his shield, he can get the slow and just Boom. knocks him out of lane. Those are the heat-seeking acid hunters that we're talking about. After landing your corrosive charge, you can just run him out of lane. You can see as soon as he hit level four there, uh, turn on that Terra Capacitor and run him out of lane. So we just saw Saint spending quite a bit of time down here throughout that engagement. He walked, saw the Scuttle Crab was gone, all the way back to Wolves, yeah. and then again back to River. Now Gromp has spawned. So 
didn't have too much else to do. Krugs was on the top of the map spawn, but it was quite a long walk to get nothing out of it, and the bottom lane is pushed. So hovering this for now, maybe he will go back down again. He needs to relieve that pressure, but it looks like he's going to back. Ooh. Cop and Bunny Fufu -Fu say they can stay safe. And Santorin, doing a great job at cleaning Saint, everything up around the Saint map. Saint cancels his back. He goes for a ganger. He does so have... He did. He's got all three buffs from the camps. Huzzah! Oh. Flash for flash traded. Good flash there from Les Boyd. Does not want to let yeah. Saint even get into range. The, the early ganks from Nunu are pretty much just for side lanes because that's where you can really take advantage of the uh, the slow and chase people down. Yeah. Uh, the mid lane is a lot, lot uh, less impactful. However, if Bjergsen goes aggressive, then he can turn it around. We'll see here, though. Deep ward from Quas. I actually really like the ward up by Krugs. Uh, you can see where uh, yep. when St. Vicious goes to uh, grab that camp because... Saint is such a hard farming jungler. Crab control by Santorin has been superb so far. Keeping both yeah. of those locked down. And he has started out with the slow, the chilling snipe. Woo! So much more conventional start here from Santorin on the wreck side. Saint trying to play the vision game. Control around mid. Doesn't want to let Bjergsen get off to a strong start. Keen already keeping him down by himself, and Saint just wants to supply the vision so that can, Keen can continue his reign. Nicely done by Bjergsen to get out, and it looks like Santorin's going to do a little tracking here. Ooh. He'll keep an eye on Saint Vicious. This is information for all the lanes if they do choose to go aggressive or choose to play passive, but he will be spotted out eventually by the wards. Good, safe play here by Team Solo Mid. They're getting everything they want out of just a little bit of info. Nobody with too much of a lead yet. Keen playing it safe as he charges up his tier in the mid lane. Won't expect too much from him until we really see the fights, unless he continues to just tag Bjergsen. But it seems like Bjergsen has been able to get himself out of that range now. Oh, not that time. Indeed. Doesn't pop his shield yet. He is with the early tier, though. So, yeah, the classic Urgot build. And he will benefit from the changes where you get the magic, or the extra 8% from your mana added onto your shield. Also, Urgot is actually fairly decent towards late game. The um, corrosive charge does give you armor penetration, percentage armor penetration. So they won't be terribly under underarmed towards the late game, but I still feel like gravity have to make use of the mid game here. With their squad, they really need to make um, a 30-minute or so win happen. Right. They can do it uh, by controlling objectives pretty easily. They do have the Nunu. They have a very good mid-game fighting team. Uh, their mid-game will spike pretty hard. Hans are going to try and go for early Rod, though, so they will wait a little bit for him to charge that up. And, of course, the tier stacking. Hopefully they can find those fights. TSM we know as well. Once they know the fights are going to be coming, they'll position so they don't have to fight or they'll be able to push the lanes. It's going to be a very tough task for Gravity here. Looking at the junglers as we're there it is. about to get a dragon going. We do have the Chilling Smite on Santorin this time for Rek'Sai. St. Vicious with the Rek'Sai Rek is laser. not, but he's got his ultimate available. I think that they're going to give it up just because uh, they just had a base from Bjergsen. All right, well, he, he popped it. They might Hot go dog. for the steal. It's so difficult to steal from Nunu. All right, so it's so early in the game. Having a rough time tanking it. Bottom lane advantage as well. Good ultimate there from yep. Santorin to scare Saint off of the dragon. He had to pull back because Keen was the one to base second there from the mid lane, and they lost all control of mid lane. So, safer play from Saint Vicious. And that's actually a very big moment in the game uh, to actually delay the objective control from Nunu and even though you know TSM not taking that dragon delaying the first dragon being taken quite big Ooh. for this take squad. axe for Keen coming out here we'll throw down a bit of damage onto Bjergsen he has his cutlass but it's sustained so he should be able to stay safe on this 60 or 70 to 65 in that lane keeping it clean Cop and Wild Turtle just about the same as well. This will be over to Keen. We'll see how much pressure he can start to put on Bjergsen with his blue buff now. 
Bjerg, no roam for the Zed yet. Unfortunate for him, he's usually making some plays by now. But no kills altogether it means both teams are... I, I would say both teams, but TSM not really knowing what to expect from this composition of gravity. Yeah. TSM in the bot lane have consistently been pushing this up to the turret, now waiting, knowing they have the advantage while Turtle stops put, putting the piercing lights through all the minions and holds it off. So far, so good. Yeah, ever since Les Plays started going back to his Lulu roots, uh, the duo bottom lane from TSM has looked quite good mm -hmm. in the lane phase. Doing a good job against Corky. This is post-level 6 Corky, by the way. Cop has been able to hit uh, the level 6. Been beaten up during the lane phase, though, and hasn't been able to base, so not much mana left in the reserves for poking. Ooh. Another good hook here from Bunny. It's good shield and the knowledge of being up to keep going on that. And yeah, like you were saying, I like the Lust Boy Lulu. He always, always a big proponent of Janna as well, and it's kind of just like a Janna with a Glare Lance, right? Almost the same type of champion with a bit more to offer. Top lane, red buff for Dyrus. Looks like he's not really using that to his advantage too much. Just something he decided yeah, to go for and grab. Yeah, the, the classic Mundo versus Maokai matchup. I thought we were done with this, <laughs> but it has returned. We were for a while. Uh, tanky We've tank. Tank, 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 tank in the top lane. <laughs> Is that what you're calling it? That's all they do is just tank things. The hooks from Bottom Bunny. lane, though. Here we go. We talk about that Thresh. Can he make the plays that count for first blood? And the trade here, the, that initial burst of both of these AD carries. Another fight here. Saints got sent on, on the run. He would have to pop his passive to get another snowball, though, because he ran out of mana. I, I'm surprised there's oh. been no teleport bottom from either of these Dank tanks from the top lane to turn it around because there was there were some very low duos down there. I guess they're they're consumed with their battle up here. Too much attention being paid to the micro of Maokai versus Mundo. Yeah, very intricate, very intricate stuff you're looking at. Twelve minutes on the clock. Keen continues to push into the turret. He's only got a few shots on it. Will be actually go hard. He was right, walking right towards it. That's the hit. That's the, the shield eight. position reverser as Rack. well. Cracked. One more. Oh, One more. Get it, no, 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 first block. Keen, you had the advantage. Oh. No. That's one of those things where you're like, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna do this. I was I'm like, I'm not gonna do this. Oh, it, I did it. It was, a, it was a great instant ulti to get the extra bonus armor right. from his. Right. You gotta remember that. Oh, but then he just went a little bit too far. I don't know. Got to keep track of that flash, <laughs> Keen. Uh, also, his um, the corrosive charge. Haha! -ha. <laughs> it fell off just as he flashed right. in yeah. to try and get you another saw the shot. seeking Ooh. missile, but. With the corrosive charge falling off, uh, missile went wide. Just so sad. It's like seeing yeah, I know. shock blast. Not then again, game. though, Bjergsen with another outplay. You always have to give credit to Bjergsen, especially on Zed. We saw it at IM time as well. Time and time again. Previous this, week of LCS. This guy. Here we go. All right, so immediate ultimate there. Not only to delay oh, the timing of the fall off. damage during ultimate. Yeah, let's see when corrosive charge is still on him right here. Right when he flashes in oh. and the flash goes. Corrosive charge. Boop. Uh, maybe he was maybe he even flashed out of range because it looked like it stayed on a little bit longer. But regardless, yeah. the flash from Bjergsen got him way out of range. And yeah. that was just an ill-fated move from Keen from the get-go. Uh, not keeping track of the old flash there. So we'll see Locks how that's very deep. See how that changes things. It'll just slow him down a little bit. Right, right. Feel like it's not, still not gigantic. The man immune still finished on one side. We have the Blade of the Ruin King on the other, but a Santorn in the pocket of the Bjergsen. Uh -oh. That is an item that Keen does not have. Uh -huh. Teleport stopped very nicely by Hanser, but that's also a teleport gained here from TSM. Yeah, everybody's sad. Let God has fallen in the mid lane. What a play, though. Yeah. Um, Strong back and forth. Whoa, the burst from Cobb. There's the ultimate from Lust Boy. The wild growth is what you're just not expecting. Oh, what? what? And the no, turtle. turtle flashes in. Oh, it was just, that was a high class bait. We'll call it that. <laughs> he knew. 
<laughs> All right. Well, we won't try to just find that one. That was misinterpreting the... their damage today. Yeah, he, he <laughs> thought he needed a little bit extra on it, but Les Boy had his back with the immediate, misunderstanding. immediate polymorph there. Turtle almost got himself too deep, but uh, Les Boy had his back. Uh, I really don't. I just want to call out once again the the Bjergsen Santorin communication there. Uh, after the exchange where they both blew flashes, he immediately yeah. calls Santorin. He's just like, "Come on here and kill this guy again." Urgot's gonna continue to try to uh, right. bully me in this lane. He has no flash now, and there's no dashes on Urgot. He's a sitting duck. Santorin immediately goes flashes on him. Easy kill for PSM in the mid lane, punishing duck. enemy mid laners for blowing their flashes for years. No Rek'Sai ultimate to stop this one. And after a bit of a hit, they do get Dragon back. This is good yeah. for Gravity. But again, that's so late for them. Yeah. For a new new team to get their first Dragon at 15 minutes. That's It'll be so... Point. It might be too long for them to try and stack up five now with this squad. They lost a lot of momentum. And I think they, they really needed to take the early momentum. Uh. But we'll see how they can uh, work this one out. Rek'Sai gonna be a problem, uh, as Santorin was actually the one who got the killing blow here. So he has not only been able to get the Sight Stone pretty early, but also full Giant's Belt on top of that, and Ultimate ready up again. Looks like they are headed towards top to try and shove Hauntzer off the turret and trade top turret for bottom turret here, as Gravity have already grouped up down bottom. Yeah. Dyrus has just taken Polaroids. Guys, bot's going down. Was hoping Krugs were up, but he's not going to be able to get anything off of that. And there's no Void Rush here. Three strong for TSM in the top lane. Turtles? Same thing for Gravity in the bot. As, yeah, Turtle's trying to defend mid. Finds out that Keen hurts. Hey, you got to be careful there. Especially AD Carry walking into Te Keen's territory. Keen yep. does have a Knight up. If he can grab hold of him with his really short range ultimate, yep. uh, then Turtle could be in for a Hurtin since he burned all of his summoners down bottom. See another reason for the Sivir ban as well there with the spell shield. So obviously take it away from Turtle, but hopefully make the Urgot it more impactful. Unfortunate that Bjergsen got the better of that in the early game for Keen. Still looking to make an impact after being 0-2 now with a bit of focus from Santorn as well. So Team Solo mid with the lead now. Start to slow things down, but then once they start to put their foot down, they will get what they want. See Wild Turtle just hanging out in mid here, but with no support, they're not taking mid yet. They're just hanging back. And, and it's nothing against uh, Bjergsen. It's just that I, everybody loves Urgot. So <laughs> that's why <laughs> everybody wants to see Urgot succeed so bad. Tough break, though. Well, if, if Keen beat him, he'd be the number one mid lane in the world, right? <laughs> Staying up there at 162 to 144, put back in CS due to those kills. But like I said, right. TSM just kind of hanging back until they get what they want. Here yeah. in the top lane, now bottom lane, instantly turret, turret. Those the other thing his. is that this gravity squad does not have anyone who can answer a Bjergsen split push. So Bjergsen can split push all day, every day. Dyrus, though, caught out with three. Oh. Lots of slow, the Bunny. final grab, and he will go down eventually. <laughs> That's what you get for eating your wheat. This Mundo thinks. All right, Bjergsen got the kill again. See how much he can stay alive from this one. So the death mark actually didn't crush Keen too hard. The follow-up of the team did. And TSM showing their strength now. It was only a matter of time before they put their foot down real quick. Five to one on the scoreboard, and they have a 4,000 gold lead to work with here. Items abound. Wild Turtle looking to finish up the Infinity Edge quite soon. Cop is on that spike, but we haven't really seen him participate yet. He's still out in the side lanes farming up. Yeah, let's we'll see what Gravity can do in this composition. What is their choice once they fall behind for really anyone? Yeah, going to have to get a uh, 5 on 4 or something like that. Yeah. Right now. Maybe in order to get that, they would have to get down some better wards. Bunny's trying his best to get those out there. St. Vicious assisting him in the vision yeah. wars, but TSM, just because of that split push bottom from Zed, they littered this uh, jungle side from Gravity that's leading up to the dragon, so a lot of vision for Bjergsen to pull off this split push. And nobody can one versus one him since he's got complete vision. He shouldn't have any problem with people collapsing on him either. Yep. And TSM can pull pressure in all three lanes. Dyrus heading right back up top. And the 1-3-1 <laughs> one, one commences. Plus, 
They have Rek'Sai as their jungler, which is always a huge asset in any late game 131. An extra teleport from your jungler to be able to turn yeah. around any sort of collapse. I mean, oh, the wards all timed out, though, actually. The deep wards timed out, at least, for TSM. We were talking about ground. wards for gravity and how with the Nunu they might be able to push some forward, but that double sight stone is really just being relied on as wards for their jungle since they're being pushed in so hard here. Yeah, they have no pressure for lanes, so it's yeah. you cannot get deep wards when you have no pressure in lanes. Gravity should be concentrating their efforts on defensive warding inside their own jungles, both sides. But apparently there was a sale on Glacial Shrouds that Gravity went after. They <laughs> now have three, three for one. Three of those. In their inventory, so lots of armor here to start dealing with Wild Turtle and Pyrrhus. One of those Frozen Hearts would do a, <laughs> go a long way yeah. towards reducing damage output from almost every member that's, yeah, that's of true, TSM. Actually. Plus the Nunu attack speed slow. Let's see how it works out inside the jungle. Quite a good choke point there for St. Vicious's Nunu, but he gets popped up immediately. Lust Boy and Santorin one, quite low. Gravity's getting the fight <laughs> they want. Wild Turtle right into the middle of the fight once again. He gets popped. Dyrus is just, oh, he's big though. Dyrus is big, but it's going to be too many members of Gravity now to focus the fight. We wondered what would happen, Kobe. <laughs> and they got the 4v5 they wanted, pushing out Lust Boy to end the fight. That was more of a 5v5 scattered, but Gravity, Whoa, Gravity going for Baron. what they wanted. How much, how much do you want to bet that Saint gets one shot by a Baron uh, spell? Oh man. Nah, he's gonna get super crab, all right, he'll be safe. I don't know about safe. <laughs> He's still living on the edge. This here. is like one Glitter Lance or one oh, Sand oh, oh. hit. If they go in big, Lust Boy actually doesn't have that much AP in his build. He's going for the Righteous Glory. Santorin smites Bunny Foo Foo. He does not have smite for the Baron now. And it is going to be going over to Cobb. That was actually missed still by St. Vicious, but they get it. They could be able to clean up Lust Boy here, but they ping each other back. So they have time to recoup. They have time to get their health. And TSM uh, doesn't take too much as they come back. Cop got the kill on Baron with both junglers there and one of the junglers being Nunu. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyway, let's let's, th let's take a look at this because this is a very good spot for Gravity to fight. Look at the look at the defense they put up. Thresh Box and Nunu Ultimate just re rebuff the full uh, initiation from TSM. Bjergsen and Santorin taken out of the fight so early. And then Dyrus comes in a bit late on uh, yeah, Mundo. Teleport. And you, if your tank comes in that late and every uh, all of your damage output has already been taken low, it's a huge comeback there for Gravity. Plus, this is the mid game where they have the Corky spike. Corky does not fall off until much later. At this point, Corky yeah. is still really, really, really strong uh, DPS source for Gravity. And they've completed all three Frozen Hearts oh, at the same time. Oh my god. After that. They're going to make sure they cover every inch of the battlefield when they get into a team fight. So it's basically also Bjergsen has to like focus Cop or Bunny Foo Foo here going in. He's, the, he's not gonna kill either of those three. This, yeah. This could be a tough choice. The aura there for Frozen Hearts is fairly short, 600, but if you have three of them, then you can cover <laughs> all distance, no matter how spread out everybody is. Well, Gravity being cold as ice. Move down the mid lane. It looks like they're gonna throw down the Absolute Zero as well. They wanna fight in front of the turret. This is not necessary. Good to see Gravity pull back off of that one instead of try and take the fight there. All right, they've been able to clear out another set of minions though. Wave clear from TSM working out. And Dyrus just pops his ultimate back to full yeah. health, which is going to deter Gravity. Cops down to Half-Life and running out of mana, so they got to back off. But a huge stepping stone back into the game for Gravity. That was Back very, on uh, even gold big. footing at least. All right, TSM, IEM champions. Bjergsen's 2-1-1 on Zed. Very, very powerful still. They can return to their split put push as long as they don't force another one of those jungle fights and, you know, box themselves into the Thresh and yep. Nunu peeling ultimates. TSM is still in a very good position. Wild Turtle eventually is going to outscale um, cop. He's got crit multipliers coming in with his infinity edge. Cop though still riding the high of the Trinity Force. He's trying. Uh, right into Blade of the Rune King to help him with you know tank busting versus window. Uh, but he will eventually run into the problem of armor penetration. Right now though, 
very, very strong. He's got Blood Boil as well on top of everything. That's one thing they're not too worried about. If they do take down TSM and they get to these turrets, those will also start to fall fast. But they got to get to those turrets. They're pretty short range before they get there. We saw the fight in jungle being the only thing Gravity was able to make happen. So you have to assume TSM is also not going to do that again. They're not a team to make the same mistake twice. Yeah, they, they definitely need to put, uh, redistribute their wards that we saw them have. They had really good vision coverage for a second. Uh, but as soon as it lapsed, a little bit of a missed call. Yeah, slowly splitting out to the 1-3-1 one, one every so often. We saw it just a second ago. Now as they clean up the camps, looks like they may try again. Yes. Cyrus is just hanging out, waiting for the wave to come up. The other so. thing is, you know, TSM, they can continue to go to that strategy because the pick for punishing 1-3-1 one, one, uh, really just comes, you know, if you let Maokai get too close or it comes from, you know, Thresh Hooks out of the Fog of War. Yep. There's not a huge scare of uh, being punished. So let's see if TSM are able to regain control of side lanes. At this point, the front line, super tanky here for gravity. Very difficult for TSM to get back there to the blood boil AD carry. So let's see if gravity can control the neutral zones. Hans are trying to back in the bottom lane. Dyrus actually stopping him a few times to get the push on. So there's the pressure. Both teleports are up for those laners. Dyrus makes sure to back off from Hanser because it can be stopped from that twisted advance or arcane smash. And TSM rotating accordingly here, assessing what Gravity is trying to do as they get the lanes pushed, which is good as well because Gravity has not been letting the 1-3-1 one, one put them into their own turrets. Yeah, Gravity are really hoping that TSM try to go all in because their counter engage is magnificent. Keen with the poke though, this Urgot poke under turret, if he lands one Acid Hunter, it forces Turtle to completely give all ground around the turret. And awards Gravity with another objective. Yeah, that's very timely Muramana for him as well. So it's gonna be added I mean, a little bit this of is This is the super hard mid game spike that we said Gravity would have to make use of. They've got the two-item Corky Spike, the two-item Urgot, yeah. and the ridiculously beefy front line with not quite enough crit multipliers yet on Turtle. Well, hopefully they can so work can within with this those. window. Looks like he's rushing into Last Whisper right after this so that he can try and take down these frozen heart builders. Looks like Gravity has to know that they are warded out here with the positional movement of Team Solo Mid. They're still trying to grab the fight. Held in the top lane, Haunter and Bjergsen going back and forth on some wave clearing as well. It looks like TSM gives up, or rather Gravity gives up, but TSM knows it, so they go back to fanning out. But within this last little back and forth, Gravity has gotten some great wards so deep within the, the jungle of Team Soul. Yeah, and they're going to return to controlling the dragon. You know, that's why I was a little bit deterred when they had, to, had their first dragon delayed till 15 minutes. Uh, but they are still stacking them. Uh, you know, on cooldown, or on respawn here for the Dragon, so... Uh, this will be number three. Uh, well on their way to number five. And this one should be another uncontested one, so... It should be pretty easy number three for Gravity. And TSM should not be contesting these. They should be giving these up, trying to split push uh, to buy more time for Turtle to get up to his last Whisper and maybe another crit item. Number three over seven to six now, 28 minutes in. Team Solo mid. As they hover around Baron, it looks like they were trying to get somewhat of an engage. Yeah. Seeing the dragon go down, maybe right. alerted them that the cavalry was just off on the wing for gravity. So, so not much can be done. Yeah, once again, gravity gonna try and use the neutral objectives to bait TSM in. They would love for TSM to pull an engage once again. Uh, this team is all about the counter engage. I don't know how much they're going to get on this one. Dyrus is backing before teleporting. Actually, he stopped back now. He instantly teleports, realizing right, it wasn't enough glory time. active. Instant hit on that. That's Petrol coming Bale from Strum behind, though. In. Can St. Vicious get in the fight? Bjergsen is trying to get into the fight, only getting one Q off. That means the W is down as well. Deathmark won't follow up with a lot of damage. 
He's waiting for the cooldowns. Gravity's pushing off TSM now. St. Vicious has Lust Boy. He can't offer peel for the rest of the there. team. Nobody's even worried about Bjergsen yet. Will he be able to change the fight now? Coming in, that kill goes to Wild Turtle, but it's a one for one with Saint going down. And now they focus the fight. TSM's Great. very oh. low to take this one on. Haunts are not in range for the Twisted Advance. And they finally peel each other off back out of the fight. Great ult there from Keen. As soon as Bjergsen tries to go for a death mark, Keen always immediately ults him with Urgot so that there's no follow-up damage on the death mark, saves Cop, and they almost grab another kill for it. But wow, what a play. You can see that TSM definitely learned their lesson. They are not diving into this squad anymore. No. They're not trying to run through the Nunu and Thresh uh, to blow up the back line because Urgot is extremely difficult to blow up. So, TSM handling this gravity squad with care. They've, they're have they trying to keep their distance, keep them surrounded, but avoid the full hard engage. There's Righteous Glory active, and Bunny Fufu with the immaculate timing on his hook. They're initially able to get uh, the engage. Lust Boy also, the Glitter Lances go a long way with uh, the slows deterring this full engage from gravity. There are multiple times here where Hunter is almost in range. He finally does get a snare here onto Turtle, but there's no follow-up because Santorin just went in for a knockup on both Cop and Keen. So he got a knockup on the DPS at the exact moment Hanser got the snare onto Turtle, which is what they were looking for. And there was the immediate ult from Keen to stop Bjergsen's uh, assassination attempt, and they get another flash out of it. So very good, cautious play. I'm surprised Bjergsen got out of that. But after Chase a few weeks ago, I guess I shouldn't be. 30 minutes on the clock, and not too much of a gold lead here coming in. Gold's practically even. Yep. Ward's now around the Baron as we're going to get a another go for broke here, I believe, from both teams. Interesting. Cop has also gone with uh, Quicksilver. So Cop rushing for the Quicksilver for the next death mark. If he does, and Keen's not in the area to try and ultimate Bjergsen, Cop now has another yep. answer for the, for the death mark. We could see what the consideration by Bjergsen was there, right? Going into the fight. He didn't right, want right back to it. anybody. There's the ultimate. Cop. This time there are no flashes. So TSM have to be extremely careful. Got to watch out. That's Righteous Glory on top of the speed shrine as well. You are not going to get away from that. Dyrus can't be helped by the team. No flashes this time. They can't get out. Unfortunate. The mobility of speed plus Righteous Glory too much for any kind of follow-up here from Team Solo Mid. They're going to watch this one go down, trying their damnedest now to take down that middle it, or middle turret to get to the inhibitor. And they have to peel off before they can get that much damage. Yeah, they trade one secondary turret for the Baron. Huge win Are there for Gravity. Crush this? No. Okay, they're backing up. Now, I think, I feel like TSM should have tried to press their split push harder yeah. when Gravity kept trying to group up. Because Gravity... They're looking to group up and force TSM to come to them so that you have to wade your way through all these tanks. Uh, and the mid-game spike Urgot and mid-game spike Corky get to take advantage of all the damage that they can drop out right now. You have to be kidding me, Bunny Fufu is also building a frozen heart. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. So now it's on cop. That's pretty... The final say of authority much for the most five frozen. Thing I've seen, yeah. <laughs> Porky, get that cooldown reduction. Man. <laughs> Absolutely. So now they're moving in. Gravity. They're going to see what they can do, putting a dent on this base. Nobody looks to put Iris. any final touches on the Takes game. A lot, a lot of damage for no gain. His ultimate's up. He's going to be able to use it out. But you don't want to range. Oh no! Of course. Lose that. Free Iris damage is still again. free damage. They got an ignite oh, on him. Oh, he gets hit and crushed by Keen and the Muramana damage. Oh my. Right through everything. He's got Muramana plus the flat pen brutalizer plus, plus Last Whisper and piece. his corrosive charge penetration. So Urgot, late game doing almost true damage with the transformation and they're just going to run into the base. Right out of Team Solomon. That's the position reverser. Turtle gets thrown to the back line. Two members of Team Solo Mid have now been taken down 20 seconds apart as they can't defend their inhibitor, and Gravity is making some great ground. They are making such a good case for the Corky pick over a later game AD yeah, carry we because they want, to, they want to make the spikes coincide, the Corky spike with the Urgot spike. Yeah. And it's worked out brilliantly for them. What a mid-game run. TSM looking to make up for it, though, right now. Go for broke here. Very risky play by TSM. Santorin is at half HP. Bjergsen 
down as soon as oh, he comes shield. back. That's gonna be the lockdown, double kill for Cop. Santorin has to dive out. Dyrus just gets back from being dead and may find himself in the same situation. The turret's gonna go down second tier on the top lane. Team Solo Mid is losing ground and they're losing it fast here as Gravity has taken every advantage that they can. Gotta the be age, careful guys, don't play around with this one now. The age of tanks is upon us. Oh, Hanser gets slowed. Can he what change happens? Yes, Dyrus flash. is gonna try to give him the they, business now. They both have flash. More business. <laughs> File this. Uh, oh, come on. He's got more where that came from. Oh, oh, what is that? You can't close your eyes when you throw cleavers. Wasting paper, throwing them at Maokai. Uh, I know. It's all right. He's disgruntled. Man, I would be the, too after that. The age of tanks is truly upon us, though, Riv. Even the mid laner is a tank for gravity. With Ergot getting so oh, beefy, really hard to assassinate him. Man, the black cleaver now. Yeah, and the late Have game. Fun. The late game shield is ridiculous for him. Yeah, you cannot, it doesn't matter how much armor you have. Keen is going to take you down to zero with this build. Let's see this again. Seen him off to the side All right, here. So Keen on the back line, even with exhaust, Cop and Keen just blow up Bjergsen. Shield saves him, and they continue the roll. So looking at the composition, Kobe, I mean, this patch, definitely tank. rolling Massive in favor tank of gravity. Massive tanks with mid-game power spike. Definitely rolling in favor of gravity. There's the grab onto Lost Boy. That wild growth ultimate is up. They do not have exhaust for the damage that's about to come in. That could be quite, quite painful. And it, they might brute force this turret. They have to be careful. Ooh, no, they're not hurting any ground. I was thinking once the minions go, USS down, he though. is just eating that turret alive. All the shots from it. Dyrus gets hooked once again. They are toying with Team Solo mid, but also taking a bit of damage. They have to be careful for it. Bjergsen out of energy, won't be able to provide too much. Gravity is doing a very great job. They got minions pouring in the mid lane. Every time a hook lands, Keen tanks about 3,000 HP out of Dyrus. Oh, here's the engage Centaur! They're gonna lock it down. Remember, they got the minions in the mid lane. Bunny Fufu will get hit here. That death mark's gonna lock it down. Bjergs in the back! The rocket finds its way through the entire team! Cobb nails that one with the eagle eye. They're finishing him off. That's gonna be TSM going down to their base. These super minions were already doing the job that Gravity was about to continue, and it's gonna be the Nexus going down. Gravity with a fantastic matchup versus Team Solo Med off of Katowice. Come up with a win. All right, so things we've learned. Late game Urgot actually has a ridiculous amount of damage output. That's a good word, I guess. Keen and the rest of Gravity able to take down number one North American LCS team. IEM winners, TSM with his favorite solo queue pick. And man, that one mistake from TSM going for a fight in the mid game instead of continuing for the split push. And Gravity just took it and ran with it, forcing fight after fight out on the neutral objectives. And the thing is, with this team, even though they're really mid game focused, like their late game is secured by their massive amount of dragon control because they are about to stack up to five dragons. If they weren't able to finish yeah. it there, then they would get fifth dragon shortly after. Well, you know what they do get, Kobe? The linear belt. <laughs> it's theirs, champions of the world. No, but Kev, what a fantastic play. Keen coming out, even with two kills on him in the early game. Cop, you can even see him sigh in there. Whew. Feeling good about it. Bunny Fufu on his thresh. And Kobe, looking at the compositions, you know, we questioned how many teams would kind of not have a lot of time coming out of Katowice, and we see still pretty much a 5.4 patch team, besides the Mundo coming from Team Solo Mid. <laughs> this may be uh, my favorite patch so far, <laughs> just because we've seen so many crazy, like the entire world, every region around the world. I like it. All right. Every region now, around the world what, Kobe? Is oh, pulling yeah. out crazy fix. <laughs> I know. Now, the thing is, do. Keen was, I feel like Keen was one of the ones who started the Hecarim craze as well, bringing Hec Hecarim over as a solo laner, and a lot of people started playing him top lane now, and now it's standard top lane. Is Urgot, is Urgot the new solo You know laner? what? You know what? Ur there have been some Urgot top lanes that crush people. Like, it's, it actually works if you just play. He's, it's a long lane, so it's hard, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. works. It definitely worked in the mid lane. 
He had one blunder early because he wanted to get the, the kill on oh. Harrison. Oh, uh, man. And he had a slight miscalculation <laughs> there. But, man, did it look so good in the late game with the beefy front line where no one could take down Keen, the sustained damage. And he, he literally ripped through any armor that anyone had. You, you could not... It doesn't matter how much armor you have versus that late game. It was a little. I'm, there's really one thing I'm sad about in that game is that Money Fufu did not finish the fourth Frozen Heart. Well, he had about five thousand hooks. That I don't landed. think he had the chance to go back. He probably he, had five thousand gold too. Those <laughs> guys were up in the face of Team Solo mid for a long time. Even without minions, it was Urgot taking the turret. Then who else? Maokai taking the turret. They were absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And as we said, you know, I was, the team fights are going to trend more and more towards. Um, really long team fight, so it's all about uh, who can yeah. sustain during the team fights and your target selection during those team fights. Can you actually stop a damage source? Um, and a lot of that, a lot of time, that just comes from chunking out one of the damage sources to make them play more defensively. Right. Um, or, but they or were hooking, or hooking the damage there's source. There's no over way and over. that they could get to either of those damage sources. All right. Well, what a win they had there. Obviously, super big to win over Team Solomid coming up in their final Number games of the split. Freak and Sirene are now standing by at the Telestrator to break down that huge upset by Gravity. Thank you very much. We have great cast so far in the day. And I'm here with Aiden to talk about a giant upset, first yeah. of all. Uh, and on top of that, a great adaptation. First game of 5.5 for both these teams. Gravity clearly adapting way better to it. Yeah, and TSM really didn't try anything new. Right? I thought they were yeah. going to try something new after Katowice, and they're like, all right, we're going to keep innovating on 5.5. Instead, they go back to put Bjergsen on a carry middle and try to have them run away with the game. And Gravity played exactly the way they should have against that. You know, Keen, he overdived at one point, but Urgot, I think, is a fantastic pick against Zed. Mm -hmm. like, as soon as he ulties in, Noxian Corrosive Charge your feet and R him so that he will eat that Noxian Corrosive Charge. And then you just Acid Hunter, Acid Hunter, and you have extra resistances, you have a shield. It's just a great counter pick. Yeah, and it's cool to see sort of these stylistic team comp as well. Like, assassins, as a class, tend to be weak to bruisers. Uh, mages and big AoE sources and good consistent damage tends to be good against bruisers. Well, guess what happens? Uh, you've got Zed, you've got Mundo low damage threat in the, in the top lane up there. Rek'Sai, who's building tank items second. Like, at a certain point, just Urgot and Co. stop dying. Three ninja tabbies on the top lane. Of the all AD mid against them, yeah. Right, all AD as well, except for Mundo trying to, like, throw cleavers at people. But yeah. compositionally... We're now seeing teams able to pick champions that work well against, hey, let's go blind pick an assassin mid. Well, guess what? There's stuff out there that beats it now. Yeah, I'm actually really excited about that. Kobe was talking about it. He's like, I'm just in love with this week of League of Legends, and I can't agree more. Yeah. There's actually a replay I want to pull up on the Telestrator here for you guys. This was kind of the fight that turned it all around for Gravity, and we'll just start rolling it out here at the start because this is just the setup for it. Bjergsen uses his shadow over the wall, and then he ulties Bunny Foo Foo, and that's where Bunny Foo Foo flashes away. Saint immediately zones them. And this is very crucial right here. Because if you look at the minimap, Dyrus has, or Hauntzer is actually starting his TP. Dyrus isn't there yet. Dyrus hasn't even started his. And is going to arrive way before him. By the time that Hauntzer actually comes in, Dyrus starts his TP. And Dyrus is the person who had the lane push advantage in top. Also, this absolute zero keeps Lust Boy from going off to this side with Bjergsen and Bjergsen has no support here. They immediately focus down Santorin, and this is funny too, because everybody's trying to get on St. Vicious at the same time. Now keep rolling the clip out here, because Keen is going to use his hyperkinetic position reverser right there, and it gets immediately polymorphed, but he still keeps the extra bonuses, and he gets double crit by Turtle. So he actually takes reverse damage while still moving at the same time, or reduced damage. Bjergsen jumps back in, and he doesn't get that final kill we end up seeing that Keen is able to back off, Bunny Fufu is able to back off, and they just clean that up very, very neatly with Hauntzer coming in to zone the back line. Cop was not a target in that fight. They were like, let's go after St. Vicious. Get St. 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 And then he gets out just by the skin of his teeth, and then they overextend to try to pick him up afterward. Meanwhile, Cop and Keen are just unloading damage. Yeah, and that's really good by them to be able to position themselves properly, be ranged, put the damage output down, ruin King second yeah. uh, for Corky. Of he course, actually had Rosewater Cutlass at that point, and yeah. as soon as but, Zed in the general in, composition sense, he was able to slow him at the same time though. Yeah, which was great because we saw Bjergsen jump in, Blade of the Rune King, just like no Bilgewater Cutlass, and then he couldn't close that tiny distance, and it forced him to snap back. Yeah, so obviously a lot of great play by Gravity. Yeah. Gravity, the team overall, playing amazingly. you got to hand them a lot of credit for now oh, yeah. being in sole possession of fifth place right now, heading into the last three games of split for them. But we're now going to hand it over to Dash for an interview. 
Thank you, gentlemen, here with Saint and Bunny Fufu. You guys just defeated the IEM World Champions one week after they come back from that. So, Bunny Fufu, how does that feel to know that you can take a game off of someone who performs so well internationally? Um, just knowing that they can beat other top teams in the world and we can compete head-to-head -head with them, it's really nice to know that. And Saint, I mean, you're a person who's had experience internationally. How do you feel TSM performed uh, when they, when they went to that tournament, and do you feel that this was an accurate representation of your ability to compete worldwide as well? To be honest, I don't know. Like, the GE Tigers never played against TSM, so it's really too hard to tell. And I mean, granted, the uh, LPL as a whole region is really strong, so I mean, it kind of showed that. Like, the bottom ranked team managed to go head to head and like come up through the tournament, but uh, I think TSM kind of almost overperformed at that tournament, and I think they kind of messed up really bad in bands and picks today, because we had like a Team comp that all counters AD and then they just like picked right into it. So I feel like they kind of underperformed today. So let's talk about Champion Select a little bit. Obviously, Urgot being a big thing here, just <laughs> everyone's excited to see it. Was Urgot something that you guys have specifically been holding on to, like waiting, waiting for that opportunity to play it against Zed, as that is a pretty nice lane matchup for him? Um, well, like, Kane just likes playing troll stuff in solo queue just for the fun of it. And like, none of it makes sense. I don't take any of it serious. But then, you know, last patch, it's like, <gasps> The Urgot buff, like this is the <laughs> moment we've been waiting for, and Keen's like eyes get all bright. But, when uh, it was back in January, he tweeted out <clears throat> that he was going to he was going to prove that Urgot <laughs> is a viable champion, and I guess he finally had that opportunity. Yeah, it looks like it. Well, fantastic. I mean, <laughs> and, it, and it seemed to pay off. Unfortunately, he actually did have that unfortunate one v one kill in the mid lane, and things looked like they were kind of tipping into TSM's favor there. Uh, Bunny Fufu just. Um, Team comp wise, or comms wise, you guys were able to kind of pull yourselves back into it through the mid game. What do you think you attribute that to? Um, just like on LCS stage, whatever, if someone makes a bad play, no one gets down, we just keep going forward and talk about what we have to do and stuff. So, and we knew we had the right comp to do it. So, like, even when, like, when the score was one to five, Keen was like, Easy game, we won. They're all AD or something like that. So. <laughs> I agree. The positivity there definitely helpful with the mindset and things like that. You know, uh, as well with um, this new patch, you decided to take Nunu, which a little bit of criticism was thrown out immediately because of the fact that you had Urgot and Corky, and it was there was kind of this question around, well, where's the attack speed benefit, you know, really going to fall? But you guys didn't really seem to need that. So what purpose was Nunu serving then, if not so much for buffing a hyper carry? Well, Nunu's like, I'd say like 20% of Nunu's job is to buff hyper carry. Like even Corky with Blade of the Rune King, you W that, and that's hitting Mundo over and over again. You're gonna kill him. And Urgot, he just stacks flat attack damage, and he has a ton of attack damage, but he has no <laughs> attack speed to back it up. And since Zed's diving in on us, or whole comps is diving at us, the attack range doesn't really matter. So if you have like a 480 Urgot that has you know really high attack speed, it's gonna do some damage. But Nunu's main job is to Act as like a buffer, like keep the fight split apart to where they can't come in. And he's really good at kiting melees like Rek'Sai and Mundo and Zed, so really good melee counter. Now, in this 5.5 uh, jungle patch, how do you feel uh, that's benefited you as a player? Do you feel like this plays more to your play style of having those tanky uh, champions available to you? Uh, I actually don't really like <laughs> tank jungles that much in like solo queue, but in competitive play, I think it's fantastic just because you actually have a role. It's like, I locked them up, get them, boys! But in solo queue, it's like, Right, where's my team at? <laughs> <laughs> right, I went in. Where are you guys? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Okay, uh, you, uh, Bunny Fufu, managed to. You know, we've we we've, we've mentioned time and time again how fantastic your Thresh is, and you know, this time you pulled the ban. Uh, you pulled the Morgana ban here, leaving the Thresh open. You snagged that up. Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, the Thresh pick. I think I played a different playstyle almost, just because I focused CDR if like the laning phase stalls out, because. Mobility and like roaming is not that important in a 2v2 standard. So just going CDR, I knew we could like siege with Thresh just because the hooks are on like a three second, four second cooldown. And if you're re landing them. Yeah. <laughs> Which you were. You were landing all of them there, but that's an important notation to make. You got to have that cooldown to begin with. Yeah. But that is interesting. You guys ended up with almost four frozen hearts. You were on your way to the fourth. I was just sitting on that. I wasn't going to finish. You weren't ever going to finish no. that? Okay, there you go. That answers Kobe's question. He was like, I wanted to see the finished, uh, the finished fourth frozen heart. But you guys decided to go for obviously a lot of um, prioritization in armor, but the cooldown reduction is an interesting, uh, an interesting point in that you guys were looking for team fights more so than looking for the this kind of individual roams. You know, the final thing I want to touch on here is the fact that, that at the beginning of the show, we mentioned you guys are in a three-way tie for fifth. Well, Team Liquid lost earlier uh, earlier today. You've now won that game, so you've separated yourselves. A game from them, Team 8 will be playing later. 
you know, moving into the last three games of the split, what are you guys looking to do to make sure you make it at least into that top six and secure a playoff spot? I think the dig match is super important just because they're one of the people that can creep up through the standings. And I think once we win that match, uh, I'm pretty sure we're locked in for playoffs just because we won the TSM game. Um, I don't want to beat seven. Like, seven's just like you just sit at home and you're like, well, <laughs> see you guys next. But I definitely want to play in playoffs because I think we've, we've really turned around as a team and we're working really well together and we want to show the fans. All right, fantastic. That was good to hear. Best of luck. Congratulations, first of all, again on this. You guys also now have that linear belt title that's been floating around oh, yeah. uh, the League of Legends community for years now. So just world champions, right? That's got to feel pretty good. Anyway, congratulations on that win. Best of luck in your game tomorrow. We are going to step away while Counterlogic Gaming load onto the stage to possibly claim a share of first place when they face off against Team Dignitas. And we'll be right back after this. I was trolling. I'm trolling right now. Sarcasm. That's not what trolling is, though. Yeah, it is. I know what trolling is. Uh, I'm an OG. Uh, and Santorum quite baby. low. Gravity's <laughs> getting the fight they want. Wild Turtle right into the middle of the fight once again. Lulu slowed here. Lulu slowed here. Lulu slowed here. See here. Lulu? Lulu got caught. I'm on Lucian, 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 Lucian. Alright, I'm on Mudo again. Careful side, careful side, careful side. He's not, he doesn't put, he just, he's up, 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 the rocket finds its way through the entire team. Gravity with a fantastic matchup versus Team Solo Medoff Akadavica come up with a win.